I'm Daniel Carpenter. I'm the Agriculture Extension Agent uh, in LaRue County. And, and go ahead I'm and I'm Morgan Hayes. I'm uh, an assistant professor in biosystems and ag engineering. And, and basically what we've got here today is a, an on-farm, off-grid solar display. Um, just a basic uh, installation of what you would need to do some, uh, to power some stuff with solar. It may not be for everybody. But we do think it has a place on some farms, especially those farms maybe where you don't have um, electricity already ran uh, to a building or a, or a farm. Uh, could be an option if you're, if you're just powering a few small things. Um, so I guess maybe we should talk about what all we've got here. Absolutely. Uh, basically, let's, you go ahead. Go let's ahead. start at the top here. These are our solar panels. Uh, these are basically what take power from the sun and create electrical energy from them. Uh, and we have two panels here. Obviously, they're set up for the display. Typically, you would orient these to have a south face so that they could receive the most sunlight uh, and produce the most power. And you want to talk a little bit about how large we have? Yeah, these are 390-watt um, panels uh, that's some, and monocrystalline panels. So that's something to keep in mind whenever you... Uh, Whenever you're shopping around or looking, make sure you look at that wattage. Um, or if you're looking at an actual panel, there'll be a, a sticker or an emblem on the back somewhere that'll show you that wattage uh, so that you know what you're, what you're buying. And I think um, just to give you a kind of a ballpark estimate, price on these was around 175 per panel. Uh, so, you know, something in that ballpark for that size panel. Yeah, that's a pretty good price for, for a panel that's almost 400 watts. Mm -hmm. so, you can shop around and find good prices. One of the real benefits is that solar has come down in price in the last five to 10 years, and we really are starting to see more reliable long-term solar panels uh, for more affordable costs, which really makes the whole system make a lot of sense on farms that don't currently have electricity. Right. So what's next? We got our. Uh, we also have a. Uh, well, we've got batteries. That's that's probably the mo one of the mo the next most important part of a of a solar installation. What we have is two. Uh, lead acid deep cell batteries. Um, some, you know, I guess there's some lithium batteries out there too. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit maybe about the differences between those? Sure. So the, the lead acid batteries are by far the cheapest option. Um, they're also the most accessible. They're ones that you can buy a lot of different places uh, and a lot of people have them on their farm. Um, the lithium batteries handle heat and cold a little bit better if you have a lot of temperature swings. Uh, they are more expensive, but they do have a longer lifespan. I'd say currently, if you do price comparison, I would have a hard time justifying lithium in some cases, but the price on a lot of these batteries is also coming down. So it's gonna be interesting to see over the next couple of years where those price out uh, and what people choose to use on their farms. Yeah, I'd say, you know, the push to the uh, electric vehicles and they're using those lithium batteries, there'll be more and more of those produced as we, as we move forward. I'm sure they'll still start to come down in price. Uh, we also have a, a charge controller, um, which, you know, basically, it. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but it, it, it kind of makes sure that the batteries stay charged, uh, regulates the electricity, kind of helps to get it from the panels to the battery and, and not overcharge the batteries. That's right. Uh, very important part. Um, and, then, and then the next part is, a, is the inverter. I guess that's the last thing that we do. That's what we plug into to get our power. Um, what, the one that we have here is a thousand watt inverter. Uh, Morgan, if we have, let's say if we have a thousand watt inverter, what kind of, what kind of things can we power if we're talking about that kind of wattage? So a thousand watt inverter should give us about enough power to start up about a half horsepower motor. So we have enough to do a small pump. Uh, if you have a water pump, um, you couldn't run it continuously on this system. We don't have enough battery bank to store up power for that, uh, nor enough charger, but it would give us enough to really run some small motors. It would also easily charge an electric fence box, uh, lighting, especially LED lighting. We're starting to see that with LED lighting, you could run quite a bit of lights. Uh, we also here have an outlet on the side and you could easily charge some of your tools or even run some plug-in tools uh, pretty easily with a system like this. Yeah, even, um, uh, you know, like let's say if you had a scale for your, your cattle in that barn and, you know, it'd be a way you could power that. A lot of things that we use that don't take a lot of electricity, uh, but we could do it with something like this rather than, you know, having the electric co-op come and run thousands of dollars of, of power lines to, to get us power back there. Yeah. Um, so a few things maybe we could do to add on to what we have, you know, you mentioned we only have a couple batteries. We could easily add uh, more batteries to this setup. Um, I think these batteries were probably in that $125 range, uh, but adding more batteries would just get us more storage, would allow us to, to store a little more energy. So if we were needing a lot of energy at night, 
um, to maybe run security lights or things like that, that would be definitely something that, that we could do. Um, we could also add more panels if we needed to recharge faster uh, to this setup. And then we could also add a larger inverter. Um, I think our total cost for this setup was right around $1,200, uh, everything included. So if you wanted to double it, you basically you could double the power, it's about gonna double the price. Um, and same thing if you want to triple it, and when you get that large, you can really start to power some uh, larger motors. Uh, you know, you can get up to that one horsepower motor range, and um, you know, and do do you know air conditioner if you want to put an air conditioner in the building somewhere, but doing things like that. Absolutely, yeah. I think this setup is perfect for on-farm use for smaller operations, but you will see if you look at YouTube and online that there's a lot of people looking to go off-grid with their houses, small, tiny houses, things like that. Uh, and that's where you see them sort of sizing up uh, to a larger system. I think this is probably a practical size, though, for most farm operations. Um, this or maybe even one size down, depending on what you're really trying to charge on the system. Just to also mention here, in here we do have some safety precautions. We do have the system grounded. You would want to ground a system um, if you were setting this up long term in a barn. Um, also, we do have um, some surge protection here between the inverter and the batteries. And then we also have a um, got an inline fuse that uh, to regulate help regulate electricity you. from the charger to the battery. And then it's also probably important to use GFCI outlets with that because you're going to be around moisture. Um, very another important safety component to to have with this. And just just so you know, everything from the solar panel up here to the inverter is running on DC. So, as you would know, your bigger batteries are DC powered. Um, so you want to use components that are compatible with the DC system and then everything past the inverter would be very much similar to your electrical in your house. So you're running the same sorts of things on this side from an AC perspective that you would see on the house. So you want to use the right components because that's what's going to actually give you the protection from the fuse standpoint and, and just generally from your wiring, you're going to use a little bit different size wiring if you're running in a DC versus an AC system. There's, there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of information out there on, on, on these type of setups. Um, I, I would recommend, it, for me, whenever, uh, I guess me and Matt Adams, the Hardin County Extension agent, spent a lot of time putting this together and we wanted to make sure that everything was kind of spread out. So if you wanted to take a picture or something, you should be able to kind of follow, you know, as you're wiring it up, kind of follow the schematics that we've got here for a, for a simple setup like that. But there is a lot of information out there. Uh, if you watch enough YouTube videos, and I'm sure we'll probably have some pubs coming out in the future that'll uh, sort of explain what all this does and what all the parts are and how to how to install it. Is there any questions? Anyone have a farm that they need power on that they don't currently have power on? I know one of the reasons that we kind of <laughs> went uh, kind of went towards this is I have a few farmers in my county that have done this and put solar panels on barns for electricity. Um, I had a farmer that was uh, he was leasing a farm, and uh, that's another thing about this. You could, you know, if you didn't get too big, you could take it down and take it with you. Um, if you were looking to lease a farm or property and didn't want to make a long-term investment uh, uh, that that was permanent, but uh, but I did have a farmer that had a well pump on a property and he needed to to power it and was quoted twelve thousand dollars to run the power lines to it. But we could do this with twelve hundred dollars. Uh, it's going to be a better option for him, and he's going to go on and do that and build that on the barn. So uh, it does have practical settings. Like I said, it's not for everybody. Uh, but it does have situations where it, it could be handy and helpful and, and economical too. Do you lose any power uh, due to the length of the wiring that you may run to outlet? You know, if you had the panels up on top of a big barn <coughs> and then you ran it to the batteries and the inverter and then to the AC and you lose any? So, so the question is does the wiring cause you to lose power? Right. Um, so there's there a couple parts. So, one, um, it depends a little bit on the size wire you use. You, you're always inherently going to have a little bit of resistance on your lines, um, but if you undersize your wire, that's where you would run into some, some real issues. Um, so you want to be careful not to undersize the wire. Um, really, the amount of amperage you're running on is what's really going to drive how much loss you're going to get on those lines. So um, one of the things about these systems is you can um, run your, your panels in series or in parallel, and that will change how much voltage versus amperage you're running. So that's one thing to consider, especially if you're running larger systems with more line runs, uh, is to consider what sort of voltage and amperage you're running the system like this at, because it will actually play a role in how much a voltage drop you're gonna have over the system, which is kind of interesting. Um, 
I would say that the inverter also inherently has a little bit of inefficiency. So some people will actually run lights and things like that on the DC side. They're much more expensive to purchase, um, but there is an inefficiency going through an inverter anyway. It's not terrible and it continues to get better. Um, generally, I would say in most cases, cost-wise, it's worth it to run it through the inverter just to not have to pay for those lights on the other side. But again, all of these components continue to be developed and, and the cost continues to shift around. So it's kind of a continuous game of playing, of pricing out those different parts of the system. Undersizing the wire would be really important. Has anybody priced wire or looked at how much wire costs right now? It's super expensive. Uh, so that'd be a good thing to remember to not undersize that. Make sure you use the proper size wire, even though the price tag may be tempting to, to go on the small side. That's why we keep it locked up. We don't want anybody to take the wire off of it. It's pretty, pretty expensive. Any other questions? I guess you mentioned parallel and series. We're wired in a series yes. here, right? So um, everything we've got is hooked up in a series. So you might make note of that too if you want to take any pictures. Um, you could wire it in a parallel, but uh, what we did was in a series. Well, and, and this is set up for it. So you'll note that actually the charge controller is an MPPT, which means it has to be wired in series. If we were wiring in parallel, we'd have multiple lines coming in from the panels, and we'd have a little bit different type of charge controller that we would be purchasing if we were running a system in parallel. So you want to sort of think about that before you purchase the system, because that's really when you're going to make those decisions, is when you first sort of lay it out in your mind. Uh, and then you want to make sure that you sort of follow through with that, that decision. The batteries, if you unchart and move, the battery is not going to lose charge just because you unhook it from the system. And it depends on how much um, panel you have and how much sunlight you have as to how fast it's going to charge the battery. But some people will take batteries out of the system and then move them somewhere else to run something and then bring them back in to charge again. It's not the easiest because then you have to turn off the system and there are some safety things with pulling a DC system apart uh, and making sure that you do actually discharge when you do that. You don't want to shock yourself. That would be a big problem. Better at 12 volts than mm -hmm. <laughs> some things, but still not ideal. I mean, that's the same thing on a car battery. You want to be a little bit cautious with it, right? It's, it's a not ideal uh, to hit yourself with one of those. So, um, But both options are out there. I would say, though, the panels I would want mounted more permanently. Um, you could build it in such a way that you could remove them pretty easily. You can see here on these ones that these are just a few screws, so taking one out and moving it somewhere else wouldn't be impossible, but just because of how you want to set up the angle to that south face, it's hard to move it very often. And the panels themselves are not that heavy. The batteries are the, the weight. That's, that's where a lot of the weight is. The panels aren't too, aren't too bad weight-wise. 